to the Crochet Corrados. That's my friends at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host, Mikey. Today is the Crochet Rocky Ripple Blanket. This is a unique blanket as the ripples or the chevron shape are different heights. So there are two different heights in this whole thing. Now this one requires a bit of patience. It is an intermediate level and I'm going to be demonstrating with Karen Cotton Cakes today. I have a sample already prepared so that I can show you how this is done. Lots of words are going on in this thing, but there is a crochet diagram which is easy to follow here on page number three. So what you're going to notice is that there will be edging on here and then you're gonna have a large ripple here and then a small ripple. The repeat is actually this section right here. So you have a small ripple and large, small ripple and large. And so this is a repeat of 40 stitches, so 40 chains plus two. So if you go 40, 40, 40, when you're happy with the width, just add two and you will have the equal balance. So once we get to a repeat section, which will be from here to here, you're going to notice is that it's, it's actually pretty easy to be able to follow. So today, it's going to require a lot of patience. It's going to be quite a bit of uh, time to film this with you today. There's going to be a lot of uh, verbal instructions to be able to show you uh, what things need to be done. So you're going to have to count uh, with this particular one. And if you ever go wrong, fake it or make it because it's easy to get back on track. I think the hardest part is these puff stitches here that have to be applied in. There's three into one, and then these are three together kind of puff stitches here, a three together decrease that it says and we're going to be doing that. So that's kind of the hardest row, but let me show you my sample because it may convince you to put in the legwork and let's begin that next. So here's my practice sample. If you prefer not to use the back loops that create these ridges, you can probably just use the regular stitch work in order to make it look flat. So if you want this to be flat and just have this, um, if that makes your life easier, then you know there's no crochet police today. But I do think it makes part of the charm. So you're going to notice is that you're gonna start off here, you'll have your flat edge, and then you have a deep gully here, and then it goes to a short one. So from the short one here to here is the repeat. So after this gully here, it'll be another short one and then a long one, sorry, a deep gully. So a short and long. And so that's what you're looking at in this whole sample. And it is actually a pretty easy one to do. I think the hardest part for me uh, in doing this was actually this row right here. Um, the, um, the puff stitches take a bit of time, so some people don't have patience, uh, but it actually works out really quite easily once you get the motion of that. So, um, you know, make it or fake it, right? So I am going to be using a Karen uh, Ripple Cakes on camera today. I have this sample left over. So I wanna kinda see uh, what the yarn is going to turn out like. Um, I don't even know why I was opening that package. But here, this is using Karen Jumbo Ombre. The yarn is changing color on its own. And so you can see how it just naturally changes. And so it does a really cool look if you're ever looking for that. And that requires five, bowl, uh, five balls of Karen Jumbo yarn. And this blanket measures 50 inches by 60 inches. So we're gonna begin today. It's using a six millimeter size J crochet hook. And I'm just substituting the yarn and the hook today just to demonstrate for your purposes today. Okay, you ready? Okay, the answer was yes. Let's go. <laughs> if you are substituting yarn today, I don't know how many balls you will need in order to do the substitution. And on camera, I'm using a size G, four and a half millimeter size crochet hook. So we're going to begin and you can chain 242 if you'd like to match the sample, but if you'd like to change the size, it's in multiples of 40. So you'll chain one to 40, determine if it's big enough. If not, go one to 40 again, and one to 40. And when you're happy with it, just add two at the end. So I'm not gonna chain that with you. So just chain the number that you want, either 242 or multiples of 40 plus two at the end. So I've just chained two multiples of 40 and then I added two at the end. What I do for myself is don't be afraid to ever print this stuff out and make notes for yourself. So I have eight single crochets that are here on the edge. That does not include that turning here. And then I have 10 on the flat zone here before putting three together, 10 going up, and then six going down, six going up, 10 and 10 and eight. So it helps me be able to know the first chain. And once I get myself established, it's a lot easier. Don't be ever afraid to use stitch markers, especially with this one. Let's begin round, our row number one. For tutorial purposes today, sorry I'm being long-winded, I'm going to give you instructions and then you can put me on pause and do it and then keep up with me in that way. It's easier than me recording almost 10 minutes of a segment. So let's begin. We're gonna go second chain from the hook. So right here, and I like the back hump of the chain and I'm going to do the first eight. So we'll do that. So we'll do one, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So this would be considered the edging. If you want to put a stitch marker here, you can. And then we're now going to proceed and now I'm going to have you pause as you do things going across. So let's begin that next. Because this is the edging, you're only going to put two into the next one. So one and two. They'll share the same stitch and this allows the bend. I want you now to put 10 single crochets in a row and put me on pause. I now have 10. Over the next three chains, you want to do a three together single crochet. So you're going to go into the next chain, the same spot, the back hump, and just yarn over, pull through, and hold it. And then go into the next one, yarn over, pull through, and hold. And then the next one, yarn over, pull through, and hold. You should always see four loops. This is going to be a constant thing throughout this whole thing. So this yarn over, pull through all four. And that is your very bottom of your of your valley. So because this is going 10 down, this is the big valley. And so I want you for the next 10 chains, just a single crochet and put me on pause now. I've now just done 10 stitches going in the up motion. The next stitch is the start of a repeat. So once you have this done, you're going to be repeating from the very next stitch all the way until you're ready for the final edge. So to start the repeating section, the next one is going to have three single crochets into the same stitch and this will allow it to turn and go down in the next segment. So this is going to be the small valley going forward. So I want you to put in six single crochets in a row and put me on pause. I've now done six single crochets in a row and the next three are going to be used as a three together single crochet to create the bottom of the small valley. So just pick up the next one, hold it, the one after that, I'm shaking today, I don't know why, and then the next one, yarn over, pull through. Once you see your, see your four loops, pull through all four. And now I want you to put the next six single crochets in a row, so you're going in the up motion. So please do that and put me on pause, so six in a row. Now that you've done six going up, the next one is the top of the peak, and so there will be three single crochets into the same stitch. And now we're going to complete a big valley again, so I want you to put ten single crochets in a row going down. So here we go, so do that and put me on pause, so ten in a row. So ten are going down. So the next one has to, and the next three actually have to be used as a single crochet three together to create the valley of the big, of the big version. Okay, and now we're gonna do 10 going up. So the next 10 will be single crochet. Please do that, put me on pause. Now I just finished 10 going up. So the repeat actually starts back here. So when I start the next and put the next three single crochets into the next stitch, you're starting back here and you're repeating just this section over and over and over until you get to the final section to do the final few stitches. So right now I've done 10 going up and so this next stitch is different because the fact that it's gonna lead into the edge. But if you were doing the repeat, the next stitch will be three single crochets in the next, six going down, three together, six going up, three into the same, 10 going down, three together, 10 going up. Okay, so then you repeat there again. So what I'll do is I'll put a time marker in the video chapter, so right at this point, so you know where the repeat will start. So you can just click that time marker and go right back to that moment. So we're gonna finish the final edge of row number one. In the next stitch here, to finish off the edge, you are going to only put two single crochets in there. So it's only a partial turn to get it to go back horizontal. And then the remaining eight stitches that you have left are going to be your final. If you have any stitches left over, then just undo the final here and get yourself to be equally balanced. So I would not necessarily frog your work at this point because it's been a lot of work to get here. So finish the final eight and meet me back here in just a moment. 
So I'm at the very end. I did have the final eight, but if you didn't, just undo this. And if maybe if you're one short, just put two into the uh, last one if you were one short and just fake it or make it right. So it'll get you back on track. So we're now gonna turn our work and now the next few rows are all gonna be the same. So I'm only gonna demonstrate it one time. So let's start those. And the repeat for this pattern starts on rows number seven through to 14, which I will take you through as well. So let's do the first few rows here. The first few rows, number two all the way through six, are going to be the exact same thing. And so you're gonna chain up one and do one single crochet on the back loop only. If you don't wanna do a back loop, just do regular, but it is part of the charm. And then right where you have the top, you have the first eight, you put two into the same one, 10 going down, three together at the base, 10 going up, three at the top, six going down, three together, six going up. And so you're just gonna match exactly what you see and we're gonna work our way through row number two and then I'm gonna have you do rows number three, four, five, and six on your own. You can just reverse back the video if you need to. And we're gonna go back for number two right now. So let's begin row number two. I'm not gonna mansplain, I hope not. So we're gonna chain up one and using the back loop only. So if you have the two strands, Sorry, I'm shaking today. I don't know why, as I said. The two strands equal a stitch, but if you go into the strand, just one of them on the furthest one away from you, that's the back loop, and you were just going to single crochet there, and this creates the texture. So we want the first eight, so that was considered one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Rely on your counts to be accurate. Now, the next one is going to be two into the same one to allow you to do the turn. So you're gonna put two single crochets in the back loop only. We're using back loop for the whole thing, so I can be quiet about that. So this is a big gully. So how many stitches do you think you'll have to go down? That's right, it's 10, so you'll do 10, a single crochet three together and then 10 going back up. So starting in the next one, just put the next 10 in the back loop only and put me on pause and I'll be right back. I've done 10 coming down and now the next one right here, here and here is the three together stitch. So this one here is the very base. Okay, so you have the one before, the base and the one after. If you can identify that, it'll make your life easier. So three together using the back loops. So pick up and then pick up the next one and the next one. You see the four loops, so you're ready. So pull through all four. So now, now I want you to do 10 single crochets. Again, the back loop taking you up in the up motion and put me on pause. I've now done 10 going up. The next one is the middle one of the grouping of three that is on a peak. And so that continues to be three single crochets in the back loop only. So we have one, two, and three. So now I'm gonna explain then the rest of this and I'll, I'll meet you on the edge. So you're gonna do six going down, three together, six going up. This will take you and the middle one will be three single crochets. Then you'll have 10 going down, three together, 10 going up, and then this, in my case, it'll take you to the edge. But here, right with the three single crochets into the middle one right here of the small one going, of the start of the small, this is your repeat going all the way across. So once you get to the end here, if your, your blanket would be bigger, you start here again, and I'll put a time marker right here just to make sure that you get that. So you have three single crochets that started it and continue. So please do this, and I'll see you close to the edge on the other side to make sure that you finish. So I'm at the 10 going up. The next one will be working to the edge, but then you'll go back here, put three single crochets into the next and six going down, three together, six going up and etc. So when you're ready for the edge, after you have your 10 going up, the next one will be two single crochets into the same one. And you should be left with eight single crochets that are at the end of this. So let's just take a risk and see if that's true. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So it is true. 
and that's how you're going to finish. So let's just go through now quickly verbally uh, rows number three, four, five, and six. So turn your work and I need you to do rows number three, four, five, and six, exactly what I just showed you. So if you need to scroll back to row number two, please do so. And I'm gonna have you do those and I'm gonna meet you on row number seven in just a few seconds from now. So I'm ready for row number seven. I'll show you the real sample in just a moment. And what I want you to pay attention to is I did the highlighting. We're going to chain four and then we're going to be using trebles for this whole uh, row. We're going to, at the tops of these that turn partially the way down, I want you to pay attention to make sure that you do put in your uh, chain ones in between these when you are doing stuff like this. And then when you're at the top here, you've got to make sure you put your chain ones there as well. So I highlighted that for myself to make it easier. In row number eight, um, we are going to be using all the chain one spaces as if they're regular stitches. So you go right into the space itself and it helps keep those separated when you see that in motion. So just pay attention to that the most. Let's show you the actual sample that I'm still working through. So here in the row seven that I'm about to start, you can clearly see you have your flat edge, you have the big gully, then you have the small. So the repeating for you will show between here and here. And so the next one will be a small gully, then a big and so on until you get to the edge. So you really can see this in motion. The yarn has changed color while I was working on that as well. And uh, absolutely loving this. So let's begin row number seven. Okay, let's carefully go row number seven. So we're gonna start off by chaining four. So one, two, three, four. That counts as your first treble. So how many trebles will you have left on this flat edge? It'll be seven because that's considered one of them. So we're going to just wrap the hook twice and starting in the very next single crochet here. And you're just not gonna use the back loops anymore. So you have a back loop break. And so you're gonna do so that you can see eight of these all together. That includes that chain three. So please do this. Okay, so I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I got one more. And then we're going to start the down motion of the first time when you're leaving an edge. That'll be next. So the very next stitch here after the first eight are in is the one that turns down. And so it's just a partial turn. So you're just going to put in a treble into the next. And this is where I've highlighted it on that diagram I showed you. So you have the one, chain one, and then treble in there again. chain one and treble one more time into that same stitch. Now you're gonna work down. And so you should know that there is three trebles that will stand by themselves before you get to the one that does it all together with the five. So chain one after this last one and then start going every other stitch, working your way down and it's only gonna be three times. So you're just gonna skip one, treble into the next, this is the large gully, by the way. So then chain one, skip the next, treble into the next one. It's gonna feel wrong to you, but just trust it. So chain one, treble into the next. I would get in the habit to make sure that you chain one after every time you finish the stitch. So chain one. So those are the three that'll st stand by themselves. So the next five will all be joining together. And so after you've chained one after this last one, you skip one and you treble, and we're gonna do a five together treble. So it's going to be skip one. So you go in, wrap the hook twice, pull through, pull through two, and then two, and don't finish it. So that was one time out of five. Wrap the hook twice, skip one, and treble into the next, pull through, pull through two, and two, and hold. So you're gathering those together. Wrap twice, skip the next one, and this is the very base one right here, and this is the treble. Pull through two and two and hold it. So this is three out of five. Wrap twice, skip the next one, treble into the next. And don't finish it. So there's four out of five, and then wrap twice, skip one, treble into the next, pull through two and two. When you're all is said and done, you will have a total of five of these loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through all five. So just kind of squish them together and then chain one. And so now you've just done the base. So the difference here is that 
each one of the small, even the small one will all have this five together stitch. So going back up the other side, if we had three going down the big side, we're gonna have three going up the big side. So skip the next one and treble into the next one after that. Chain one, skip one, treble into the next. Chain one, skip one, treble into the next. And don't forget the chain one after it. So now when you skip one, the next one is the top of the middle of the peak there. And so this one here is going to have the five trebles that have chain ones that separate them. So make sure you chain one after you did this and starting in the top piece only, you were going to treble and then chain one. That was one out of five. So then treble again into the same stitch, pull through two and two and two, finish it chain one and do it again. You keep doing that until you can see five of those trebles. Okay, one more time. Don't forget the chain one after. So I can see the five. So now I'm ready to go down the small section here. So whenever you have the small gully, there's only one treble that stands by itself. And so you skip one and you're going to treble into the next. And then you're going to do your five together stitch like you did before. So make sure you don't forget the chain one after. So let's do a five together on the small one. So skip one and you're going to go to the next and start gathering your stitches. So pull through two and two and hold. Wrap twice, skip one, go in pull through two and two and hold. Wrap twice again, go to the next one. This is the very base. Pull through two and two and hold. So I'm looking for five. And when you get all five, you should see six loops left on your hook. So there's four, oops, there's four. Skip one, go to the next. Pull through all six loops and chain one. And because you're going up the small gully, there's only one. So skip one. There's only one treble that will stand by itself. And chain one. And then you're at the top peak again. So skip one, go to the top. And you're going to put in your five trebles again that are separated by chain ones. So we have one and keep adding those in two, three, four, and five. And don't forget the chain one after the five. So what I want you to do is that I want you to go all the way across. It's going to look a little bunched up on you. Don't worry about it. Just trust the system because the next row we're going to be putting single crochets in the spaces, which will help stabilize this. So because you're going down now the big boy here, there's going to be three that will stand on its own. You'll have your five together, three that will stand on its own here. And then I'm going to meet you at the top of this peak at the very end. So you're just going to keep repeating what I just showed you all the way across and I'll show you how to finish the edge in just a few seconds from now. So I'm ready for the final edging. I have my chain one after this. And so by skipping one and going into the top, I am going to do my trebles. And because this is an edge piece, it's treble, chain one, treble, chain one and treble. So there's only three in this one and not five. And don't forget at the end of this one, do not chain one before you start. So now the final eight that you have will each be a treble. So you're gonna complete this every time you do row number seven. So we have one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, and eight. So 
but it tells me all my counts are perfect. And that's what it will look like. So let's now move on to row number eight. In row number eight, we are going to be using the spaces as if they're stitches. We can still count those out. We're only using the regular stitches. We're not using back loops. So you have another break from that. So you're going to chain one and you are going to single crochet into the first eight. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now, once you have the eight, the next one here is part of the one that is three into the same. This one will have two single crochets in it because it's part of an edge. So it'll only be two because you're still maintaining from a horizontal edge. So now each one of these spaces going down are going to equal the number of stitches that you need in order to do it. So you should be conscious that the space before the five and the space after the five is part of the three together single crochet. So we're gonna count this and let's see if it works. So starting in the next space, use your spaces and tops of stitches. So we're gonna say one, this is in the top of a stitch for two, space for three, top of the stitch for four, space for five, six, seven, eight, nine, and the top of the space, uh, top of the stitch for 10. So this leaves a space, the middle, and the space for a three together single crochet. So going to the space, we go into the top of the stitch here, and then we go into the space after that, th that five together, and make that a three together and pull those together as one. So starting in this one right here, you're gonna go up and you have your 10 going up. So just use your spaces and stitches. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Should leave you on a space, and it should be the middle one right here that is your top, and so there'll be three single crochets going there. So we have one, two, and three, and so to go down a little gully here, then remember there was only six, so we're gonna maintain that. So go into your next space. So one, top of the stitch for two, space for three, top of the stitch for four, space for five, and top of the stitch for six. And like the other one, the space here and the space after plus the one is the part of the three together single crochet. Okay, and then you have six going up starting in the next stitch. So we have one space for two, three space for four, five, and the space for six. And so the middle one of the grouping of five here is going to have three single crochets in there. So please do this all the way across and I will show you how to finish the edge right over here in just a moment. When you're ready for the edge, the 10 going up should take you to the space right before this one. See the group of three? This one should be the one that you will put only two single crochets into there. So one and two, and then you have the last eight, which is consistent for single crochet. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six and seven and don't forget that final turning chain here you just go right into the chain work not into a space and that'll be your eighth and then that's how it'll look pretty cool right so let's turn our work and let's do row number nine so nine and ten will be the same thing that you already know from the past let's turn our work and let's talk 
Back here on your favorite thing, nine and 10 are the same thing as number two. And so you'll chain up one and you'll use the back loops only. Do your eight going through and then two at the top and then 10 down and etc. So I want you to do rows number nine and 10, just like you did number two. You're gonna re be, be returning back to the back loops only for those two, which will give you texture and also makes it really highlight in the pattern as well. So please do rows number nine and 10, just like row number two, and I'll see you on number 11 in just a moment. I'm now at the end of row number 10. So I'm now ready for what I believe is the hardest row of them all. And we're gonna take our time going through this. So let's go through row number 11. In row number 11, we're going to be reintroducing the idea of the chain ones between the puff stitches. And we have to maintain those because those keep the uh, stain stitch count as like what we did before, okay? So like before, we had these going down. And so you're going to notice is that you will have the number of puff stitches going down and then the same number going up on the big galleys, or on the big gullies, and then the same number going down on the small ones, and the same number going up. So if you can maintain and watch those counts uh, going up and down, it will make your life a lot easier. So we're going to begin, and what we have to watch for the most is really these last ones right here. So you have your eight in a row, so the chain three will count as a double crochet, and when you get to the other side, just gotta make sure you have your puff stitch, chain one, and a double crochet here, and then your last eight. So you just really gotta maintain those. So let's begin and try number 11. Let's start row number 11, chain three, that will count as your first double crochet and starting in the very next one, you're going to do the next seven in a row. So with the chain three and the seven, that gives you the magic number eight, make sure you're using the back loops only. So this will be the second, and number three, four, five, six, and seven. So with the chain three plus the seven, it gives you eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now the next one, we're gonna start working our way down and we're gonna take our time. So let's begin that in a second. Okay, so let's start the next one. And this is gonna be a combination of a double crochet, chain one, and a puff stitch. So we're going to double crochet into there, back loop only. Everything is a back loop on this one. Chain one, that's the one that I highlighted, and a puff stitch into the same back loop. So how do you do that? Is that you're gonna wrap the hook and going in, pull through, pull through two and hold. And you're gonna do that a total of five times. So that was one, two, three, four, and five. So you'll see a total of six loops. Yarn over, pull through everything. And then you're going to start making your way down. So chain one before you move and skip the next one and do a puff stitch in the next one in the back loop only. So just pull through two and hold and keep doing that until you see six loops. Once you see your six loops, pull through everything and then chain one and then skip the next one and do the next one down. So you're gonna be able to count a total of five puff stitches going down. And that includes that top one that we started with. Okay, chain one and do it again. So skip next one puff into the next. So the puffs take a bit of time. And you're gonna notice that the puffs will be puffing out away from you. So you were looking at the wrong side of the work right now. Okay, pop through, chain one, skip one and do another puff stitch. Make sure you chain one after you do each one of those. So I'm gonna turn it over and I can see one puff stitch, two, three, four, and five. 
So now I'm ready for the base section here. And this is going to be a three together puff stitch. How you're gonna do this is that um, it's kind of tough, but you just have to bear with it. So just skip the next one and start your puff into the next one. So we have our five, so we do one, two, three, four, and five. Do not pull through and do not chain one. Skip the next one, and this one is the very base. So you're gonna do that again. So you're gonna do the next five into this one right here, so for a puff stitch. So we're gonna start and we're gonna say one, two, three, four, and five. And you're not yet done. You wanna skip one more and go to the next one and do it again. So there's gonna be a lot on this hook. So we're gonna pull through once, twice, this is three, four, and five. So if you don't think this is hard, then you're okay. So you have a mitt full of loops. I'm not even gonna to bother to count because I counted my fives as I went. Once I'm confirmed, I yarn over, pull through everything. And that pulls all those three together and then chain one allows you to move on. And so all of these are in the very base. So because you're going up the other side, there will be a five, a total puff stitch going up, but do the first four and then the fifth one is part of the top peak. So skipping the next one, and we're gonna puff into the next one after that. So one, two, three, four, and five. Pull through all, all of them when you see that. So then chain one, skip one, and keep doing this. So you're gonna have four puff stitches that will stand by itself. So I'll keep quiet and I'll keep going. Don't forget to keep skipping those stitches. Don't forget to chain one after. So now I have four puff stitches that have left from the base. So one, two, three, four. And so when I skip one, I'm gonna be in the top peak. So the top peaks are always gonna be the same. You'll start off with one puff stitch complete. So let's do that. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. So there's one, pull through everything chain one and the same one again, do it again. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, pull through everything, chain one and do it one more time. So the top peaks have three into them. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. You pull through everything and don't forget to chain one after that's done and now you have three puff stitches that are in there. Now because you're looking at the wrong side it's not so obvious but when you turn it around we'll see it clearly. So now this is a small valley. So in the small valley there's only going to be two puff stitches that will stand by itself so skip the next one and puff into the one after that. Make sure you chain one in between, skip one, and do another one. So in the small gully, there's only two that stand on its own. Don't forget to chain one after. So the next one is part of the gully, and it's like we did before over here. It's going to be those three that are sharing the same uh, base. And so you were going to 
skip the next one and you start doing kapha in the first one, but you never finish it. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. Once you get the first one done, don't finish it. Skip one and do the very base one, which is the next one after that. So you're gonna puff there. So one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, you're not done. Skip one, do one more. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. And once you have all of that done, yarn over. I'm not even gonna bother to count. I'm just gonna trust myself and just pull through everything and then chain one moves on. So because this is a small gully, you skip one and you're gonna have two puff stitches in a row that are on its own. So we have one, two, three, four, And five, pull through everything, chain one, skip one, do the next one after that, and it's a puff on its own. So we have one, two, three, four, and five, pull through everything, and chain one, and now you're back at the top. So I'm, I'm just going to explain the rest. So you'll skip one, you'll put three just like you did over here. So it'll be a puff, chain one, puff, chain one, puff. Don't forget the chain one after. And because you're going down the side here, there will be four puffs that'll happen. And then the middle three will be sharing just like you did over here. And then you're gonna go up and there'll be four on its own. And I'm gonna meet you here at the edge, but you just keep going up and down in the same motion. And if you turn it around, you see some beautiful texture has happened on the other side. So please do this all the way across and I will see you at the edging spot in just a moment. So I'm coming up to the final edge and you'll have four puff stitch that will stand on its own. You have the base and then the four. So when you skip one, you are going to puff into the next stitch. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. And this is where I've highlighted. So you're gonna pull through everything, chain one, and then in the same stitch, you're going to double crochet into the back loop as you had been. So this remains the last eight in a row and those will be each uh, double crochet in the back loop. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And this will conclude off what I believe is the hardest row, and this is number 11. So when you turn it around, you're gonna have some beautiful text work. Now, it's gonna get even better once you do the next row, and that's what we're gonna cover next, number 12. Back here on the diagram, number 12 is going to be the single crochets in the regular stitches, and we are going to use those spaces in between the puff stitches like we had in down here. So we want to make a note of that and watch for those puff stitches as you go up and down. And you are going to use the space before the and then the puff stitch and then the space after for your three together, just like you see on the base. Okay, so let's do this. This is row number 12. Row number 12, here we go. We're going to chain one and we're going to single crochet into the first eight. Let's count those together. So we have one, and we're using regular stitches. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And this will take you to the double crochet that is part of this puff stitch. So in this double crochet here, you're going to put in two single crochets so that it can turn down. And then you're going to use the space. See how it's hidden? That's why I highlighted it. I had a hard time with that. So I'm gonna go into the space after the turn and I'm gonna count and go 10 down. So that's that one. And then the top of the puff is number two. Space, just separate them with your fingers. Is three, top of the stitch, four. Space, 
for five. Top of the stitch to six. Space for seven. Top of the stitch for eight. Space for nine. And on top of the stitch is 10. So this takes you to the base. And so this next space, this one here and the space after is the three together single crochet. So it'll pull everything together. So because this is the big gully, we have 10 going up and you're gonna start in the first available puff stitch. So we have the puff for one, space for two, puff for three, space for four, puff for five, space for six, puff for seven, space for eight, puff for nine, and then here is the space for 10. So in the top puff stitch here, I was just stalling for a second, top puff stitch, which is the group of three, is going to be your a single crochet for three. And that'll turn, so one, two, three. And then you're gonna go down, starting in the space after this puff. And so you've got 10 going down. So we have space for one, puff for two, and this is a small gully, space for three, and there's only six. Puff for four, space for five, and puff for six. And this will leave the space before the grouping of three. It'll leave the group of three and then the space after, and that's your three together single crochets on your small gully. And then because this is a small gully, you start in the next puff stitch and you work six going up. So the puff for one, space for two, puff for three, space for four, puff for five, and space for six. And this should take you on the middle puff of that grouping of three, and it does, and there will be three single crochets in there. So one, two, three. So now you're just gonna continue with what you know. And so you'll have 10 going down, you'll put the three together, 10 going up, and you'll do that in your small and your large gullies, uh, whether it's six going down or 10 going down and up and et cetera. And I'll see you at the very edge here in a moment. So please continue across. When you're coming up on the very edge, you'll have 10 coming up, and then you'll be in the double crochet that is part of this puff stitch. So it's puff chain one double. So in this last double crochet here, you'll have your two single crochets in your regular stitch, and then you're going to single crochet the last eight in a row. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now the eighth one here, this is a chain three, so go into the actual top of the chain, not into a space like I was just about to do, because yeah, then you'll start miscounting. So you're gonna turn your work, and the final two rows of the repeat are next, 13 and 14. Rows number 13 and 14 is the same as number two. You're working on the back loops only again with those single crochets to have stabilization. So I want you to do rows number two again, uh, two more times, so 13 and 14, and then we'll be back in just a few seconds to talk about what's next from this point because the repeat will be over at that point. So here I am at the end of row number 14. So I finish off with a single crochet back loop. So you did two after what I showed you. So you did 13 and 14. You're now going to go back in the video. You can see video chapters and go back to round, uh, row number seven, which is going to be this. And so from here all the way to here is your repeat throughout the whole project. Now, the other thing that you have to do is that you can go all the way until it measures 59 inches and you can either end on a seventh row or a 14th row, just keep an eye on your row counts. And then the final three rows are just single crochet on the back loop only, just like you have been before. And that will give you the balance point to be able to finish it so it looks like the very starting here. So now it's on your hands. 
you're capable of many great things. I love the way that this yarn worked out and I think it's amazing and I think you'd have a great time doing this as well. So this is it for today and we hope that you enjoy and I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.